Chapter 5, Section 3, Regulation of the Cell Cycle. Cell Regulations Necessary for Healthy Growth. There are both internal and external factors that regulate cell division. External factors include physical and chemical signals. Growth factors are proteins that stimulate cell division. Most mammal cells will form a single layer in a culture dish and stop dividing once they touch other cells. a chemical signal telling it to do so. These signals are interpreted in the nucleus and the cells reproduce their genetic information and divide into two identical daughter cells through a process called mitosis. Cancer cells do not obey this rule and will divide even if they do not receive appropriate signals. Two of the most important internal factors are called kinases and cyclins. External factors trigger internal factors which can affect the cell cycle. Apoptosis is a programmed cell death. All cells will eventually die. The goal is that they will reproduce themselves before they die so that the organism can continue to make more cells. Apoptosis is important to know that it's a normal feature of healthy organisms. It's a good thing. As human beings are developing in the womb, they have webbed fingers. Apoptosis occurs before birth so that we no longer have webbed fingers. It's caused by a cell's production of self-destructive enzymes. It occurs in the development of infants in more places than just the webbed fingers. Cell division can become uncontrolled in cancer. Cancer cells don't follow the rules. They don't follow the checkpoints. Somehow they slip past those checkpoints. They form disorganized clumps of cells called tumors. A benign tumor is one that remains clustered and it can be removed. A malignant tumor is one that can continue to grow and break off and form more tumors in other places of the body. When that occurs, if this were to break off and this cell, you see it's entering the bloodstream and it's traveling somewhere else, we call that metastasizing. So a metastasized tumor is how cancer cells, a clump of cancer cells called a tumor, can actually spread to other parts of the body. Cancer cells don't carry out necessary functions. They come from normal cells, but somehow they've been damaged during the cell cycle regulation. Carcinogens are substances that are known to promote cancer. Standard cancer treatments typically kill both cancerous and healthy cells. Imagine something small enough to float on a particle of dust that holds the keys to understanding cancer, virology, and genetics. Luckily for us, such a thing exists in the form of trillions upon trillions of human lab-grown cells called HeLa. Let's take a step back for a second. Scientists grow human cells in the lab to study how they function, understand how diseases develop, and test new treatments without endangering patients. To make sure that they can repeat these experiments over and over and compare the results with other scientists, they need huge populations of identical cells that can duplicate themselves faithfully for years. But until 1951, all human cell lines that researchers tried to grow had died after a few days. Then a Johns Hopkins scientist named George Guy received a sample of a strange looking tumor, dark purple, shiny, jelly-like. This sample was special some of its cells just kept dividing and dividing and dividing. When individual cells died, generations of copies took their place and thrived. The result was an endless source of identical cells that's still around today, the very first immortal human cell line. Guy labeled it HeLa after the patient with the unusual tumor, Henrietta Lacks. Born on a tobacco farm in Virginia, she lived in Baltimore with her husband and five children. She died of aggressive cervical cancer a few months after her tumor cells were harvested, and she never knew about them. So what's so special about the cells from Henrietta Lacks that lets them survive when other cell lines die? The short answer is, we don't entirely know. Normal human cells have built-in control mechanisms 
they can divide about 50 times before they self-destruct in a process called apoptosis. This prevents the propagation of genetic errors that creep in after repeated rounds of division. But cancer cells ignore these signals, dividing indefinitely and crowding out normal cells. Still, most cell lines eventually die off, especially outside the human body. Not HeLa, though, and that's the part we can't yet explain. Regardless, when Dr. Guy realized he had the first immortal line of human cells, he sent samples to labs all over the world. Soon the world's first cell production facility was churning out 6 trillion HeLa cells a week. And scientists put them to work, in an ethically problematic way, building careers and fortunes off of Henrietta's cells without her or her family's consent, or even knowledge until decades later. The polio epidemic was at its peak in the early 50s. HeLa cells, which easily took up and replicated the virus, allowed Jonas Salk to test his vaccine. They've been used to study diseases including measles, mumps, HIV, and Ebola. We know that human cells have 46 chromosomes because a scientist working with HeLa discovered a chemical that makes chromosomes visible. HeLa cells themselves actually have around 80 highly mutated chromosomes. HeLa cells were the first to be cloned. They've traveled to outer space. To llama rays, an enzyme that helps cancer cells evade destruction by repairing their DNA, was discovered first in HeLa cells. In an interesting turn of fate, thanks to HeLa, we know that cervical cancer can be caused by a virus called HPV, and now there's a vaccine. HeLa-fueled discoveries have filled thousands of scientific papers, and that number is probably even higher than anyone knows. HeLa cells are so resilient that they can travel on almost any surface. A lab worker's hand, a piece of dust, invading cultures of other cells and taking over like weeds. Countless cures, patents, and discoveries all made thanks to Henrietta Lacks. So there's actually a book called The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. It's written by Rebecca Skloot. Um, I have a copy of it if you'd like to read it. You can find it pretty much anywhere. Amazon, library. It's a really good book and it looks a lot into history. It looks into science and how did we get where we are today.